It's Simon Jordan and it's Eddie Hearn, the man at the top of Matchroom Boxing, live with us in studio this morning. Many of you getting in touch, of course, we're talking about the impact that this man, Turkey Al Al Sheikh, uh, the man at the top of Saudi Boxing, has had on World Boxing, on Eddie, on Matchroom, on Frank Warren, on Queensbury. There's Rob. Why do we need promoters or world title belt organisation? Let Turkey run boxing and deal with the TV networks, as I don't see the need for promoters or belts. And them simply getting a cut of the profits. <laughs> You've got a wry smile on your face, Mr. Jordan. Well, that's a question for, for young Eddie over there. I mean, I, I smile wryly when he talks about doing it for the good of boxing, because if it was done for the good of boxing, they'd have done it before. It's ultimately the finances in the room now that have changed the direction of travel, and that's business. Nothing wrong with that. That's the real world. Um, it's an interesting one, because <laughs> when you replace the establishment, you become the establishment, and Turkey Allah Sheikh speaks in a way I think is quite interesting and quite refreshing. I think it should be questioned. I think it shouldn't be just, just be taken at face value, the motivations behind it and what's going to happen with it. And that's what I like to do at times. Not We're in a, we're in a halcyon period. These guys are getting fights made for them. They haven't got to do much. Just turn up and people can point out how much money they want to give them. Right? That's, to me, not much of a skill set. And it does make me wonder whether the end game for these guys with the Saudis is to look and say, well, what do we need these guys for? They're glorified agents. What do we need them for? We can own the fighters. We can talk direct to the fighters. We can have the relationship. We're the money. If I was the money in the room, with, if, unless there was a bloody good reason, why would I want to deal with Hearn and Warren? If I've got the ability to turn out their lights economically, what do I need them for? Eddie, you're I can a take glorified agent. Yeah, I think that's a little bit harsh. I mean, we, we, we've got a, a huge business of, of running global sports and, you know, the, the ability runs deeper than being a glorified agent and a deal maker. I mean, there's so many elements that go into the production of a major show. I mean, a few weeks ago, we ran with Riyadh season the event in Los Angeles where our matchroom team, which is you know, 40 people, helped create an event that couldn't have been done without us in terms of the promotional ability, you know, the infrastructure of the TV deals, licensing, dealing with the commission, dealing with you know, the, the, the local councils and government in terms of the red tape, you know, safety requirements, drug testing. I mean, it's just the, the job is just incredible and as the size of the shows increase the nature of the job changes you know this isn't a situation as Simon said of you just going in and doing a deal and taking a cut ourselves Queensbury Gold Star is a huge amount of work and the requirement of these people and the level that Turkey Allah Sheikh requires it's not just as easy just to do it yourself because when you've been in the game for a long long time and I think he acknowledges as well it's quite refreshing actually he wants the ecosystem of boxing to keep thriving Mm. Riyadh season alone is not going to keep the ecosystem of boxing alive in the same way. Don't forget, there are hundreds of shows around the world every week. You know, this week you've got small hall shows. DAZN are putting on two, three shows every single week for boxing fans. We can't just rely on four, five, six, seven Riyadh season yeah. events a year. Yeah. But what that's doing is it, it's helped creating the ecosystem for boxing. But you'd agree, Eddie, there's been this explosion in the world of boxing with the arrival of the Saudis. Oh, without, of that, there without, is no yeah. doubt. And in, and in person, specifically, Turkey Al Al Sheikh. So you can't really live without him now, can you? For if you sure, want to do yeah. big, big things yeah, in the world of, course of boxing. We, of course we can. I mean, we, we, but we, he could probably live without you and Frank. Yeah, maybe. Maybe he doesn't want to. Maybe, you know, I mean, if you look at our stable, he can't live without our stable and he can't live without Frank Warren's stable and, you know, and obviously those fighters that are, are under contract. But... At the moment, I think the relationship is great. I don't think he's looking at, you know, to take over the world of boxing and try and put everybody out of business. People have looked to do that before. But he's talked about doing a global boxing league, yeah, hasn't he? There's it? a huge amount of work to take place. Yeah. To, you know, I mean, would you, you, would you and Frank attach yourselves to that? We're, we're in those conversations with him. You know, it's all part of the, the plans and strategies that have been discussed. But it's also a huge amount of work. I mean, don't forget, these kind of plans have, have taken place before not necessarily with the depths of budgets that we're talking about now, but we're all in for it. I mean, you know, anything that's going to, as I said earlier, you know, and Simon says he doesn't believe it's for the good of the game. I think the financial element, of course, will always be the defining factor. That's not quite what I said. Well, well you said that you don't think it was. It is me and Frank coming together or us working in Saudi no, is for the good I, of the no, game. No, I question your observation, which was basically the reasons why you did it, because if you could have done it before, if your motivations were for the good of the game, you'd have done it before. And talking about the value of you in the equation, your business is diversified, so you're a different kind of business than perhaps Queensbury or other, other businesses because you've got darts, you've got snooker, you've got other aspects of your business. So 
don't take any offence at the ob obligation about acquired knowledge. If he can acquire the knowledge to make fights that you guys can't make, he can acquire the knowledge to put on events that you guys put on. So with the scale of budget and with the scale of opportunity that they have, they can turn your lights out if they feel like it. Now, whether they want to or not is a different matter, whether there's any benefit in doing that. But to suggest that acquired knowledge is not something that's within their reach when they can make fights that you have readily said that you and Frank couldn't make for the last 10 years. They've just walked in and decided that you guys are going to do as you're told and that you're going to bring fights to them in the way that they want them to bring. They're now going to tell you what they're going to pay on pay-per-view, whether they get their possible broadcast or not is a different matter. They're now going to tell you when these fights happen and how they happen and who gets to fight. So I don't think that's an unreasonable observation for me to say to you that if they want to, they can do what they want. If you're an events company, they can do what you do. And they can acquire the knowledge, whether that's acquiring your yeah, business yeah. I mean, or when acquiring you say, knowledge around you know, it. When they say they can turn your lights out, I, I disagree. But um, certainly with our extensive broadcast deals... Well, to... they can take your fighters, Eddie. If they no, want no, your no, fighters... No, no. Contractually, mean, you have your fighters for a period of time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you but, don't put your fighters under but, contract, according but, to you last well, time. No, but you do. We do for right. the bigger fighters, yeah. So they but can also, take your we fighters. have extensive you know, broadcast contracts to create shows around the world for a long period Granted. of time. So, you know, it's not just as easy. And it's not, you know, the, the issue with... Unless there is a system that is going to provide opportunities week in, week out across all levels of boxing, from Olympic prospects to small hall shows yep. to the elite level, it's actually, like, that ecosystem of boxing is something that he actually recognises. And all the talk about possible leagues and all that kind of stuff is in existence with what we're seeing at the moment, which is for us, you know, near on 40 shows a year globally, mm, mm. Queensbury, top rank, PBC. It, it's not just as easy. It's interesting you mentioned the terminology ecosystem because I mentioned that seven, eight months ago and you didn't like it then because I was talking about the ecosystem of boxing and the higher end of the Saudi investment, which is brilliant because it takes things to a new level. But like in any other sport, like in football, and like in, in, in any other sports, if you create hyperinflation at the top end, it drops down to the bottom end. And all of a sudden, you've got fighters expecting to get paid certain levels of mm. purses to be able to make domestic fights because the Saudis have created that pattern. Mm. And I think that's something that should be people should be mindful of. So when I said ecosystem about nine, ten months ago, you looked and said, well, what's the ecosystem about? Now you're talking well, about the ecosystem. what's the ecosystem about. I what was I saying about the ecosystem? But the, what I'm talking about in terms of the ecosystem is not just what fighters are getting paid but the, the entire ecosystem of the sport. What we're seeing right now is more interest from fight fans, more interest from broadcasters, yep. more interest from... Because of the brands. Saudis. Yes, correct. Solely. But But that is transferring to all levels of our business as well. So right now, people are more interested in boxing. That translates to the ecosystem of coming to a show, Catrell Progray. That also, where there's a show, you know, there's a, there's a, a top, top tier show on Saturday. More people are thinking about boxing. I like boxing at the moment. It's hot. All of a sudden, more people are coming to the small hall shows. All of a sudden, more kids are going to grassroots. That's the ecosystem of boxing, not just what someone gets to fight for British title. No, no, you I are understand. correct, by the way. Yeah. And that is a problem that the businesses will face. Oh, well, he's getting X to fight in Riyadh. Do you think, he's, do you think getting... he's right, what he said yesterday? Because I think there's merit in it. He talks about the cost ent cost of entrance, say, say for pay-per-view. If he can get a million people watching at 15 quid, he'd rather have a million people watching at 50 quid, that, uh, 15 quid rather mm. than four, 500,000 people watching Absolutely, at yeah. 40 quid. Mm. I, in principle, mm -hmm. agree with that, but do you think the audience is there to achieve it from that point of view? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the problems... Because you've got hardcore fans. And yeah, got I think one right? of the problems you're faced with on pay-per-view nowadays is illegal streaming, you know, across all sports. I mean, so... But it's his point is quite interesting, and I think the ideology is if it's cheaper... You yeah. won't illegal stream. You know, mm. one of but the problems... there was an irony about that, though, yeah, wasn't there? But... I didn't say it to him yesterday because the reasons one of the biggest illegal streamers was be out queue in Saudi, mm. state sponsored piracy. So there was an irony behind him oh, railing you against have piracy. Said that at the time, what happened to you? Normally, you you know. I mean, well, I thought in the interest, you're not, you're not going well, soft. Though. Well, in the interests of not being censored again, I thought it was better <laughs> to, to <laughs> leave. You're never going to be price point around eighty dollars. I know they are. That's mm. going to encourage illegal streaming. So yeah. I think there's definitely an element sure. to, sure. Know, if you do reduce Same the with football. price. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Listen, we're, we're going to head to another break, Eddie. Before we do, are you glad that two has become three because Boxer and Ben Shalom have come to the Saudi table? Um, is that good? Do you welcome and, him yeah, in there? absolutely. I mean, everything, you know, depends on what fights you've got. You know, there's been other cards where we've had, I think the last show, we had one fight on the undercard. 
Um, obviously, we've got we've got the main event September twenty first. We've got the main event on October twelfth in the co-main. And for us, my priority is to make sure we have the best schedule and best talent on the zone. You know, they are our principal broadcast partner. And now, with other promoters coming to the fore, we're able to have Chris Eubank Jr. on the zone, Fraser Clark against Wardley on the zone, Ben Whitaker on the zone. Right. So yeah, I, honestly, I think it's good and. No one's going to, and, and the, but it's despite stuff you read, no one's trying to stop anyone from getting in. Frank Warren, you know, when AJ came into the Riyadh season, that in, in turn helped. How does that, has that chime with the guy, with the inability for you guys to do business for the last 10 years? How does that, how does that mentality chime with, say, letting Shalom into the equation, who's with Sky, which is the blue tip broadcaster? And you've not been able to do business with Frank, so by definition, you've denied one another's opportunities. So how does that now chime that you'll be welcoming Ben into the equation? Because of how we've seen the whole thing work, and with the reality of his excellency. You mean the paymasters have yeah, decided he, yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, 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 no. He has decided, and we have, you know, by working together. Or did Turkey Al Sheikh decide that Ben Shalom joins the party? Of course he did. I think he looks at the fights. We all put the fights together. Right. He looked. He would have watched the Wardley Clark fight and said, "That was a great fight. I'd like to put that on." So did you just say to Frank, the, "The Saudis want Ben Shalom in"? We better listen. We disagree no, to it. You, you, I mean, it's not. That's not even a conversation because we've seen with Top Rank, with Golden Boy, with Dimitri Salita. Mm. He's working with a dozen promoters. And if he likes a fight, he doesn't care whether they're with Eddie Hearn or Jim White. Mm. It's going on. you know. And he's not saying, oh, let's give Boxer some opportunities. Let's yeah. give Matram some opportunities. He's just going, I like that fight. Yeah. I mean, he watches everything. So much to the point, you know, probably the great example is Mark Chamberlain. Yeah. You know, a guy who he watches. Who's his favourite fighter. Paul, yeah. Right? Yeah. On Frank Warren's show. Mm. All of a sudden he went, I want Mark Chamberlain. Now, I was in the room when he when he, we had that conversation. He didn't know who represented Mark Chamberlain, <laughs> but Frank got, was the lucky guy who did. But Mark, he'd already made the decision. Whoever Mark Chamberlain was with, he's on the card. Right. So it's, it's. I think I, like I think, it. I think we're all doing so well and things are so good. It's It definitely changes the perception of letting people in because we don't have a choice to You've let people changed, in. You've changed, haven't you? I have. Do you know what? I, actually, you know? I mean, we're absolutely on fire at the minute, so it's a lot easier to, to be more relaxed. But I think the softening of the relationship with me and Frank yeah. you know, it was listen for years it was like this you know mm, mm. and it is quite refreshing to actually pop down Scots and have a couple of oysters and Dover soul with Frank you know <laughs> um, we'll take a quick break and then all eyes on the 21st of this month on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker TalkSport